session of the bricks and mortar webinar series. Please note that this is being recorded. So if you do not want to be on camera, please take a moment and turn off your camera at this time as we are recording the session. The second language learning context requires a solid understanding of best practices that can support student confidence, proficiency and achievement in second language learning. I'm Jordan Sloan and I am the bilingual literacy coach for the Renfrew Community School Board as well as the Director of PD for the OMLTA. And I am going to be your host for this webinar series starting this evening. A link is going to be provided at the end of the session and we would really appreciate any feedback that you have. Oh, sorry, I'm just letting people in as we go here. New and experienced educators in all programs across all panels are feeling a little bit of isolation, especially right now with our virtual environment and an inability to enhance their skills as they work within these environments. The challenges of COVID-19 have further deepened this isolation, as well as challenges related to teaching courses that are in a blended environment where oral communication and student interaction are essential of learning. Tonight, we are joined by Chantal Rodrigue from Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. She's going to be discussing developing 21st century learning fluencies in FSL classrooms. Next week, we are going to have a session using technology to support the development of oral communication and student collaboration with Erin Colson. And the remaining two webinars in this series will take place in January and will include effective blended learning in the FSL classroom and effective assessment in a digital environment. So again, I'm going to remind you that this is being recorded. So please turn off your camera at this time. And I'm going to turn the floor over to Al. Enjoy your session. Great, thank you for that warm welcome. I'm so happy to be here. I'm just going to share my screen. I do wanna first of all, thank all of you for your time and interest and setting aside some time on a Tuesday evening to join myself and other educators for some professional learning. So, la maîtrise des aptitudes numériques en FLS. The French language classroom has its unique challenges when we're in a physical space. And of course, it has new challenges in a virtual space. I'm just curious as we start today, what platforms people are using, if you are already teaching remotely, if you're not a full-time remote teacher or still in the classroom and are here just in case um, we're not sure what the future holds, then if you know what platforms your board is using, I'd love to see that in the chat. So I am currently teaching grade three FI with the remote day school, Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. I have been a teacher with this board since 1999. I started out my career in middle school, then went down to kindergarten and landed in the middle or uh, close to the middle. And I've been spending most of my career teaching grades two and three or a combination thereof. I have been on a journey since the spring with a very steep learning curve. I have had some growing pains, trial and error, but with a growth mindset, I've evolved from a very low tech teacher to someone who now enjoys challenges in the virtual classroom. It has given me a lot of learning opportunities as an educator to stretch and grow and to reinvent myself. I'm by no means an expert. I'm continuing to learn. So while I do have knowledge to share with you today, it is not exhaustive. My main goal is to give you an overview of several tools and a glimpse of some of the possibilities that they can afford you in the classroom. Okay, Google Classroom, Brightspace, Teams, Office 365. Okay, so a variety. Oh, lots of Google Classroom. Our board has not um, gone in that direction, so I am using MS Teams primarily, as well as the hub. The students uh, do, uh, they tend to record important work in their portfolios in the hub and that carries through with them uh, as they are a student within the, the board. 
So the goals of this course are to acknowledge that everyone is on a learning journey and are at different points in their journey. So that being said, some of you may be at a beginning stage uh, looking for lots of tips. Some of you may have a very well-developed skill set. So take what you can from this course and put the rest aside if it's not for you or not for you yet. And hopefully if uh, there are things that are not for you yet, they will help someone in the class. And I hope everyone will be able to get some great takeaways from today's session. We're go I'm going to share some tips of how to create community in the virtual classroom, or at least how I do it. There's lots of different ways. As teachers, we're unique and our classrooms each year are unique with their dynamics. Look at differentiation within the context of digital learning. What is differentiation online? Share options for creating some engaging multimedia content. So we'll be looking at Keynote, PowerPoint, Clips, Flipgrid, as well as OneNote when we take a look at Immersive Reader. I'll be sharing options for using accessibility tools to support students in the second language learning environment. So while the purpose of accessibility tools is more encompassing um, in terms of leveling the playing field and creating an inclusive learning environment and equitable access for all, the focus of today will be on ways that we can leverage these tools to support the FSL learner. Okay, so one of the tools of Keynote is signaling. So sharing a little bit of information at a time. Now, it, it looks like most of you are probably already teaching remotely. So you've been establishing your norms since September. In the physical classroom, it varies uh, from the norms in the virtual classroom because there are digital tools that we use within our classroom community in order to communicate that students have to learn how to navigate and also get used to what's the appropriate usage. So the microphone is um, best kept off like we're doing for our class tonight as we want to be considerate of other learners. So I always put that into perspective for students that noises can be distracting for learners around them. And while I do love being serenaded once in a while by my musical students, we do uh, who hum while they work, we do keep our microphones off as a rule. And video, um, in the beginning, I, I did have, I did use video quite a bit in order to get to know the students. In the classroom, you're picking up on facial expressions and body language, and you can gauge the temperature of the room by looking around and the level of engagement. So video is a tool. It's, um, it is somewhat limited because depending on the platform, you're not able to see all students at once. But one of the things that I do is I spotlight students. So in MS Teams, you can, on an iPad, you can pin one student to fill the full frame. And in, um, on a computer, as a teacher, I can spotlight a student. And my, I, I teach primary, so they actually, uh, a lot of them are very outgoing. They like to share. They want to have turns. So we do use video in that way. Um, we, we do spot, have opportunities to spotlight. The other thing students are learning how to do is to share their screen. And that's another opportunity for them to uh, be part of our community and participate and be engaged. We have set, just to go back, we have set some norms around keeping video off for most of the time now, but just because as I'm sharing richer content and more videos, it does put a strain on bandwidth. So that's just a little tip with videos off, it's easier. The raise the hand feature, that's wonderful because that is really basically similar to what we have in the physical classroom. I do, in terms of my norms in the class, I, I tell the students that I can see the order of who has their hand up. 
And so we do wait patiently for our turn. I also will let them know um, if there's quite a few students that have their hand up at once, I'll say so-and-so's second, so-and-so's third, so-and-so's fourth. And that just helps them to know that their turn is coming. Now the chat feature, this is what's taken the longest for me to set routines around in the classroom. Um, some of the students get really excited with the emojis. So what I find is really helpful is giving the students opportunities to do fun things in the chat. In the morning, they get to put a GIF um, in the chat or an emoji to express how they're feeling that day. We often have you know, little giggles on some of the things that, that they include. They include coffee ones for me every once in a while. Um, we take the temperature throughout the day, see how students are feeling. They will react to things using the emojis in the chat. It's also a quick way to poll students to see um, if they want to vote on what, what types of activities that they want to work on, for example. So the chat is really a, a wonderful feature. And I find that by allowing students some time to, to play, essentially a couple of times a day and express themselves and then personalities. It does help to manage the, the use of the chat and make sure that it's appropriate for the rest of the day. Kind of like in the classroom when you take out math manipulatives, um, if you're a homeroom teacher, you wanna let them play with it first. I, as a primary teacher, Oh, I see somebody, it looks like somebody is not seeing the my screen. Rosaria? I'm not sure if there's a fix. I can stop sharing and then start again. Maybe try we'll to, oh, can I just put out a reminder to those people that have their cameras on? Can you please turn your cameras off? We are recording this session. Thank you. And Chantel, the rest of us saw it fine. So, um, Maybe if you load it back up, it'll be okay now. Okay, great. And I'm just gonna turn my video off now as well. Sorry, I have to find my window. There we go. Perfect. It was hiding. Okay, we can see it again. You're good to go. Perfect. So I do what, how you decide to, um, if you decide to have more of a, uh, an, an adult model where students can, can take a quick break to, uh, go to the washroom, then, you know, if that works for you and your students, then um, then by all means, that is something that is an option. I like to tell the students that their space is an extension of my space. And so while they're with me during the day, they actually ask for permission. They will leave once in a while for also a quick body break or if their younger siblings are making some noise, they might uh, need a private family moment. So they, we do have, I have set norms around asking for permission to, to leave our learning area as well. We have set some norms around technology and difficulties that arise and how we communicate that to one another and how we support one another through that. It's important that we don't leave anyone behind and I remind students of that. And so we'll, we'll stop and try to support a student if their microphone's not working. We'll remind each other, okay, maybe if you log out and log back in. So we do troubleshoot together and that's part of our classroom norms. Okay, so I'm just going into play mode now because it has its cute little animations. Okay, community in the virtual classroom. I 
uh, have a student board. So here for privacy, I've changed their names and I've covered their faces. I showed my students this, I got a little giggle, giggle out of it. So this is something that, that I use. Um, we can't always see each other, but we can start the day by saying good morning and, and uh, reminding each other of what our friends look like. This was really helpful for the first four to six weeks. And I always start the day and often end the day by telling them how fantastic they are. And I thank them for their patience and for supporting one another in their learning. So lots of praise is a key. Getting to know one another. So yes, in the introduction, Jordan said there's challenges, there's um, requirements for French as a second language and, and those include oral and listening activities. So some of that can happen in whole group where students, a few students have a, a chance to share uh, during that class and everybody gets a turn throughout the week. But what I've actually used is uh, breakout channels. So I have, I can run four channels and four meetings at once within MS Teams. If you have, if you're able to use breakout channels or you know what that is, if you wanna put a little reaction in the chat, that would be great to let me know. Uh, so I will have three groups running and the main class and we've, we've practiced going in and out of these groups. We, if we're working on certain vocabulary or language structures uh, or we're even developing, you know, responses to a read aloud, students will work on their sentences and then I'll select a chair or secretary to when they're in the group to give turns to each of the students and each student will will share. And then the listening part is they would record what their peers have shared. And then we come back to the main group and the friends will say, oh, so-and-so said their favorite food was this. Or if we're working on our winter activities, um, so-and-so really likes to do these winter activities and they do this with their family. Uh, and the, my students, don't have an issue with this. I teach primary, so going into a small group works for me. You have to figure out what's gonna work for your group of students. I think I've heard that, you know, sometimes for older kids, they're, they're not as keen to do those things, but if that's a possibility for you, it's, it's wonderful because they get more oral practice in small group, and then they're, they are um, more engaged and excited to bring things back into the main group and share. So it's a variation of think, pair, share. We do, as part of our community, celebrate new skills and celebrate um, September had its challenges. Their level of French was even more, there were more, more the discrepancy between, you know, the, the weaker students and the stronger students or the gap was a lot wider than I found it usually is in the physical classroom. Some students may have been more engaged in the spring than they, um, than others, right, with, with it being optional. So we celebrate our, our new uh, learning in French. We also celebrate our new digital skills and how we can use them in our learning environment. Um, so students will, we will celebrate, but if they're frustrated too, they, it's important that they communicate that to me. So every once in a while I'll check in and students will let me know when they're having difficulty. And we, we do stop and we do, if, if students are frustrated, I kind of take a poll and see what's working and what's not working. And if we need to take a break from from whatever we're working on. Like today we were using, we're starting to use um, GB Plus Interactif. And there were some issues uh, getting into the site. And so, you know, those students who were able to do that did and the students who, who were having difficulty, then, you know, I copied some, some links for them and they went to read the books. So we find solutions. It's important to have a plan B, you know, if you're able to share things a different way if things don't work out. And we always find a workaround. And I do um, have a lovely group of students and some have just automatically 
become leaders. They're very helpful. They will they will explain steps to students. If I've explained it a couple times, I'll say, hey, uh, so-and-so, do you want to, you also have an iPad or you also have a Chromebook. Do you want to explain those steps again? And so I have a lot of students who will step up and uh, be helpful. So it's important you know, obviously in November, if you've been teaching remotely, you've already taken an inventory of the skills that your students have. But like in the classroom with any learning, it's important to figure out what students entry level is and to to do some diagnostics there around their digi digital skills. At the beginning of the year, I did an inventory as to what devices students had and what um, platforms they used um, last year because last year it was, it was more open. Uh, so actually the GB plus interactive that is, Rosario, that is with the HWDSB. I think uh, part of the PD, when I've, I've uh, attended PD, they've also stressed that it's important when you're demonstrating, uh, using a new tool, navigating to a new part of your uh, di digital classroom, um, uploading files, opening pages, that kind of thing, or, or creating new pages in a digital notebook that you demonstrated across various devices. Uh, and if you don't have those devices, then you, you can ask students that have similar devices who are, who are at a more comfortable uh, level to say, to tell you what they see. Hey, you know, I'm on my screen, it looks like this. What does it look like on your screen? Also, when I've been teaching students how to screen share, I've actually, you know, Googled videos with instructions and played it for them. I've taken pictures of the key, various keyboards and what it looks like if it's a window icon or a print screen button. So it's important to take those things into consideration. Not all of my students have board devices. And again, relying on experts to help out. I find with primary students, um, and you could do this with older kids and even with high school kids, to have a, a, a checklist of skills or things that they're able to access and navigate and do on their own. So, you know, are they able to upload uh, work into a portfolio? Are they able to open a new page in class notebook? Uh, can they use the audio feature? Um, are they able to use immersive reader? Which sites are they having trouble with? Or So I, I find what works well with the younger kids and, and with the older kids, you can do more of a checklist, um, but I will actually physically go put like an image of something or a word. For example, every, every student gets a fruit and it's in their private channel. So when we when they were first learning how to go to their private channel, they had to come back and report on what they found there. Um, also, uh, I when I wanted them to look at the files that I uploaded in MS Teams and and locate where they were, then I, I would put like a hidden file, like a hidden image of. Um, an animal. Now I'm a homeroom teacher. I have 20 kids, so that's very doable for me. If you're a rotary teacher, um, then you know, or a high school teacher, then a checklist would obviously be more pragmatic. But it's just a fun way to to get a sense of to help them explore and get a sense of what they're able to do. And then I'm able to do to have my own running list of who is at various points of their learning of new skills. So when I introduce private channels, when I ask them to take screenshots um, of certain things that they're doing on, on websites, uh, like for example, um, math manipulatives, if they're um, recording themselves reading a book, for example. So whoever is needing extra practice while students are working independently, I'll grab a small group of kids and I'll meet in a breakout channel. If that's not an option for you, you can simply ask the other students to have their mics and videos off and then go over and, and practice the skill again with those seven or eight students, for example, who need that extra practice. Uh, 
I have established a culture of perseverance. So I shared, it's not, you know, it's not always easy. There are days that are that are challenging for me as well, where, you know, not everything goes according to plan, just like in the regular classroom, but you ha have the added, um, you know, the va added variable of technology and everybody else's technology. So I showed a video to the students at the beginning of the year. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to automatically go to the new window. No, hang on. So it's called Piper. And then we talked about what we, what we saw. So I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to go to the new window. This is a new platform for me. So uh, we have to be... flexible along the way and learn new skills. Okay, hang on. I might have to put the link in. I'm going to share my whole screen instead. So this is part of a series for growth mindset. Okay, that's not working. Hmm. I wonder if it's because it opened it in a new tab. I will share the link and I'll just give you a couple of minutes to have a little uh, look at this video. So it's over four minutes. So maybe, you know, watch about, if you watch about three minutes, you'll get three, four minutes, you'll get a sense of it. And then we'll come back. I may be able to share the link if you, or share the video if you put the link in. Okay, there's the link. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> this is thinking on the spot and having a plan B. So I put the link in the chat there. Oh, do I have? Okay, perfect. Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay. Oh, but there's no sound. Sometimes with when you're you're playing a video within a platform, but even if you scroll through, like you fast forward through some of the images, Jordan, you'll get the sense of, um, you know, the bird wants food. The mother, kind of nudges the bird along, it's playing around. So the bird gets overwhelmed by waves at first and then tries again, follows the hermit crab. Scavenging. My students really like it. We will refer back to it and say, you know, oh, we're persevering. We're being like Piper the bird. So you can find things that are appropriate for um, your grade level. There's lots of videos out there on growth mindset, even uh, how the brain works. Okay. Share my screen. Thanks, Jordan. So we talked about being proud when we try something new that's challenging, not giving up, and it's okay to have help from friends and, and try new strategies. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the meat and potatoes of this session. So looking at creating engaging content for the French classroom that is accessible to learners, that helps learners at various levels. So we're gonna start with Keynote. 
which is available for iPad or Mac, go into clips, then PowerPoint. I'll also uh, show Flipgrid and Immersive Reader in Flipgrid and OneDrive. And if there's time, we'll also take a, a quick look at Immersive Reader in Word. Now, I'm very fortunate. My district has been running a series of professional development sessions uh, Tuesdays for Apple products and Thursdays for Microsoft products for weeks. And it's just it's been such an amazing resource for me. It's allowed me to to really play. So this um, is going to show, this is something that I've created for social studies as uh, being a French immersion teacher. And this shows um, signaling, and then it'll also have the, the audio element. Also visuals here for our learners. So I'm gonna go through in the presentation mode. Les Premières Nations du Haut-Canada de 1780 à 1850. Les Anishinaabe et les Wendat. Chapitre 1. Les Wendat. Les Wendat sont un des peuples autochtones qui vivent dans le Haut-Canada quand les Européens arrivent sur ce continent. Ils habitent dans des grands villages dans le sud du Haut-Canada. Ils cultivent du maïs et d'autres produits pour se nourrir. Ils s'appellent eux-mêmes Wendat. Les Français les ont appelés les Hurons. Aujourd'hui, ils s'appellent officiellement les Hurons Wendat. There will be a continuation of this unit. I'll show you this um, pages from this text in class notebook and how students can use immersive reader to to help them understand the content of the the social studies unit this is just a cute little animation les villages wendat les wendat vivent dans des gros villages d'au moins mille habitants souvent Ils ont construit ces villages près des cours d'eau pour avoir de l'eau et pour pouvoir voyager plus facilement. Pour se protéger de leurs ennemis, les Wendat ont construit des clôtures autour de leur village. Ces clôtures, ou palissades, sont faites de plusieurs rangées de pieux pointus. So this is dropping the text in slowly is part of signaling. Um, I have my cursor set to a large size as well, um, which you can't see in, in presentation mode, but I do do that often when I'm teaching. In the iPad, in Keynote, there's the option of a laser pointer if you swipe up from the bottom. I'm going to show you here a video is added. It's in the screen and it'll play in the screen instead of opening in a new tab. So we shouldn't have the Piper issue. I won't play all of it, just but just to give you an idea of inserting um, video into Keynote. Just fast forward a, a bit. This is a village that is currently in Quebec. So this was a great resource in looking at the longhouse and other aspects of the village. There's some pictures inside the longhouse. So students and I were able to watch it and discuss it. We also looked at illustrations 
and circled different things that we saw in the longhouse. Okay, so now building a slide in Keynote. If anyone's familiar with Keynote, I'd love to, to hear in the chat. That would be great. So Keynote is fairly new to me. I've always been, uh, I've always relied on PowerPoint up until now. So I've been having a lot of fun exploring it. I've, I started learning it this year, so it is new to me. So here I have the title. Now part of accessibility, it's always recommended to have a title and to have captions uh, for your illustrations. Cute little animation. Some signaling with part of the text appearing at a time. And then here I'm going to exit presentation mode. So you part of we're, we're not going to focus on all of the accessibility features in terms of uh, addressing exceptionalities. Uh, students who are hearing impaired or low vision, but I will give you a few tips. So you can actually, for students who are not able, who have a screen reader because they're low vision and their device will read um, any of the content that you share, you can actually add a description for the image and the screen reader will pick it up. So if you go to format and then image, then it gives you the option. Now it's recommended for accessibility to only put two to three sentences. So this is a bit long, but just to give you an idea, you would describe the sentence. For animation, then you also go to format. You go to animate, action, show action. So this here, it actually uh, shows you what it's going to do. So I inserted a shape. Um, I, so I just went to shape within Keynote. And then you can change the, the, the speed at which it moves. You can change the scale. And you can change the type of effect or animation. Now this is just to cr help cre make the content more engaging for students. It's not necessary. But um, it, it does, it helps to keep their interest. And I'm going to show you quickly. So if you start from a blank slide, there's a lot that you can do. So you can add pictures from a text like I did, for example. You can change the background. When we look at immersive reader, there's actually uh, recommended contrast for background and writing that's based on research of students, uh, you know, with a, a, a group of students with dyslexia, dyslexia. So it's based on a body of research of what works best, what contrast works best. So you can always uh, look at that in Immersive Reader. Then if you wanted to add an effect. For your bubble. I can share that resource after Chloe just remind me um, at the end. So if you want to animate the animate here. So if you want to do a fly in preview what that would look like. I'm going to go back to this slide. One of the great features is it can actually show you your build order. So if you want to, you know, be clicking if you're using Keynote um, as your teaching tool for content, then you can look at, you know, am I going to click and different things are going to happen? Is the video going to, to start playing um, right after, you know, all the bullets appear? And you can preview them. So it's a really cool. Oh, do you? I don't think you see that on my screen. 
No, but if you go down, so if you go down here, build order, that's where you can play around with it. Adding media, photos, image gallery, movies, web video. You can record audio. Que vois-tu dans la maison longue? Regarde l'image encore une fois et fais une liste des choses que tu vois à l'intérieur ou fais des petits dessins avec le vocabulaire si tu peux ou juste les dessins. So that would be an example of including audio instructions. And obviously there's a lot that you can do in terms of media with video. Keynote has a, a great feature. You could do image gallery. So say you were doing um, a read aloud or a series of, of steps and you have you know pictures of in, in art, it's great for example, step one, step two, step three. It will look like one image and then when you click, it'll flip through the images. So that's a really cool um, aspect, which would also be good for some images from a, a read aloud. Um, obviously you have to check what, what the copyright laws are for your board, but if you had some images of a read aloud as prompts, they could flip through them. So now I'm going to show clips. And again, these, this is just an overview of many of the tools. If you go to Apple Education, there are these courses that you can just, they take online and they're self-paced and you'll work through different modules. Microsoft also has a lot of resources as well and you could do extend your own learning um, based on your interest, what you already know and what you wanna learn next. Okay, so I created, I, I like to create read alouds and clips. I'm going to show you an example of one of them. So I won't share the whole thing, but it, it, this is a finished project from start to finish. And then I'm going to take you through a few steps to create your own. Clips is an iPad app. You can export your videos. You can export the clips files as videos and you can upload. I saw some of you use Flipgrid. You can upload your videos to Flipgrid and then the, the read alouds can be housed there. So you'll see some features here. You'll see uh, live titles, which is a wonderful tool for our French as a second language learners. You'll also see some additional visuals added within the text to help convey meaning. Voici une autre histoire de Carlo, le Carlin. Carlo, le touriste, par Aaron Blaby. Text français d'Isabelle Montagny. Carlo recommence ses mauvais tours. J'ai le regret de vous apprendre que Carlo le Carlin sème la confusion chaque fois qu'il part en voyage et qu'il prend l'avion. Même quand tout est planifié soigneusement, Carlo n'hésite jamais à bouleverser tous les plans. Il est tellement désagréable qu'il gâchera votre voyage et vous rendra la vie intolérable. Il brisera toutes les règles et bousculera toutes les traditions. Pour Carlo, causer des désastres est une réelle ambition. Même dans les endroits où... So, there are um, lots of different stickers and emojis that can be added throughout. Now I did a screen recording because I'm using my laptop and Clips is on my iPad. I did a screen recording of a walkthrough. There is a little glitch when I, when I did the playback of my recording of the read aloud, um, because I was doing a screen recording, there was a little bit of a lag. So you will hear an echo, I apologize, during part of the demo. 
So this is clips. This is a demo on how to create a read aloud using clips. Create new. I've already taken pictures of the storybook. So I'm going to go to my photo library, insert the cover page. The image gets inserted square, so I'm pinching to get it all in. Whether or not you're going to record audio, you need to press and hold the red button to insert the image. I am going to record audio though. Talma la lico par Aaron Blaby. Text français d'Isabelle Montagny. I'm going to go to the next page. Pinch. Talma se sent triste. Sans morale est au plus bas. For the interest of time, I'm not going to record that whole page. There's a few other things I want to show you for the next part of the book. So here, I'm actually going to insert live titles. So I'm going to click on the speech bubble, select the format that I want. I'm going to choose this one. Go to the globe, make sure it's set to French. Perfect. So I'm going to now record these pages. Otis est son meilleur ami. Il lui répète qu'elle est parfaite. Mais Thelma dit découragé. Je ne suis qu'une petite ponette. Now, it's not going to be perfect. And that's okay. So I'm going to go edit it. It's really worth it for how it supports students to go in and Take the time to make some changes. You'll need to add punctuation. If you're uploading the clips into Flipgrid, you can actually use closed captions within Flipgrid and Immersive Reader. So you could skip this step of live captions. And I'll be showing you that as well. Add the proper French dialogue format. Je ne suis qu'une petite ponette. So it's not bad. It's pretty intuitive inside of clips. Done. I'm going to show you one more thing. I'm going to add effects. I find that adding stickers and emoji not only makes the content more engaging, but it helps students make meaning of the text. I'm gonna insert a heart between the two friends. And on this page, the next page, I'm going to go to emoji, insert a discouraged face. Exit from here, do a playback. What's this? Sorry, that's that little echo there. I'm going to edit the effects. I don't like how the emoji appears as soon as the first page is being read. So I'm going to use a feature called split and split the frame. Live titles really helps here because it will help you determine exactly where to split before the second page starts being read. Now I can go back to effects and insert the discouraged face. 
And let's see how that plays back. Otis, Esso Mayo, Emmy. Il lui répète qu'elle est parfaite. Mais elle m'a dit, découragée, je ne suis qu'une petite honnête. Okay, I'm doing a screen recording, so I hope there isn't going to be feedback or an echo when I play it back for you. Fingers crossed. I did try a few different ways, but a little glitch. <laughs> no luck there. Now, there are some great things you can do. You can add posters in between frames, and then you can actually edit them so that they have French words. And you can also add music. So you have lots of different options there. That's just a little demo. Thanks. So yeah, I did see the question about copyright. I have it in Flipgrid with my own class code with where nobody else can enter. So uh, I hope that's okay. So I'm just, I'm being very careful with the privacy and it's not being shared outside of my private classroom code. But I don't know 100% what that answer is. So multimedia, you can also create lots of wonderful things with Microsoft tools. I use uh, PowerPoint a lot to um, when I'm teaching live, if I want to mark up a page and, you know, draw little illustrations to go with our brainstorming or to go with, um, you know, math, answering questions, drawing, representing our answers in various ways. Uh, I use the draw tool quite a bit in, in PowerPoint, which is great. Okay, I'm just gonna open, go to my PowerPoint window. Hmm, okay, that one's not working. Hang on. It's not picking up my uh, PowerPoint window for some reason. There we go. So I'm going to do it by tab instead of by window. So that should work. Okay, so this is another book study. Um, in this PowerPoint, I'm going to also feature some of the content that my students create within Flipgrid. So they're actually, they actually find it quite engaging. Flipgrid is a great way to have the students practice their speaking skills. And then you can, you know, listen um, and determine, you know, what needs to, what steps you need to do next. So it'll guide your teaching. Also, you can include prompts and, and structure their responses as well. You can also do practice in class uh, ahead of time. So I did a, a book study. So this is the next slide. So reading response prompts for oral communication. So after the first reading of this book, we talked about uh, a few different reading response prompts that they could choose from. Quel aliment aimes tu manger? So I've got an audio here, so you can also um, include audio within PowerPoint. So that's an option to for playback. Si tu étais un piranha, mangerais-tu des fruits comme Boris ou serais-tu un carnivore comme les autres piranhas? Pourquoi? 
Raconte une fois que tu as essayé quelque chose de nouveau. Comment t'es-tu senti? So I do have a student sample that I'm going to play it for you. I am I'm, I'm not going to play the visual because um, of privacy. But this is a response to the third prompt. Je veux dire mon taxi préféré dans l'histoire, les paradas ne mangent pas les ananas. Et je veux dire quelque chose de nouveau. Je veux commencer avec quelque chose de nouveau. La nouvelle chose est que dans deux valleys, C'est comme deux, deux, trois autres journées. Je veux faire les rangolis pour la première fois. Oui, rangolis, c'est un, c'est un, um, c'est un, um, dessin sur le plancher ou une table qui est fait de la, fait de la place Okay, so arrière instead of derrière, because the piranhas take a bite of the derrières of the swimmer. Another feature you can use within, if you're using PowerPoint uh, as your, your teaching tool for your content, if the students are giving you responses, instead of typing them, you can actually use the dictation tool. Make sure you have it set to the correct language. Je mange aussi quelquefois les kiwis. And it's good for students to see how this is used. Um, one of the, some of the features of Microsoft tools like Word and um, one note, which I'll be showing you, is adding audio files, so recording themselves. Okay, now part two of this book is, again, this is in Flipgrid, so this is a showcase. Now, this is student choice, giving them some, some choice with what activities they're going to do, so differentiating in terms of the, the product. The one thing I forgot to mention earlier that differentiation could mean to, if students aren't quite ready to use a, a particular digital tool, is giving them another option that's at an easier level for them. So if class notebook is too challenging, you know, um, if if you're first introducing something, then giving them a lower a lower tech option is important to scaffold that learning. So the first student made a slideshow and then recorded her slideshow in Flipgrid. So if you're teaching 
upper grades, then obviously the content is going to be different. You're, you might have some provocations for them to respond to. Um, and, you know, based on certain language structures that you've practiced ahead of time. Uh, for younger students, then, you know, it would be a lot shorter. They might be recording a sentence or two that they've also practiced ahead of time. That's more of a patterned um, type of, of sentence structure, so rep, rep, repetitive. This student has decided to make a puppet show. You have to remember to turn the volume down because he really projects his voice. So a little story, three-part story. Or, you know, if they just want to simply tell a little bit of a story and they're not into making visuals, then simply to record themselves speaking. So I've hidden the recording in behind this picture, which is actually appropriate and goes with the story, just for privacy again. So again, with PowerPoint, you can insert the video within and it doesn't um, need to open up in a separate tab, which is nice. You can also describe uh, the photos, any visuals. You can add descriptions. So you can go to alternative text here. And then you can describe the picture. In personne est dans l'eau, en maillot de bain. It didn't recognize my apostrophe. Des poissons piranha mold sont derrière. If that were an important part of your presentation, you would definitely want to include some accessible or alternative text. You know your students, so you know what their needs are. Now, this is a student who decided to do a written piece. So again, there's choice there using a different digital tool. The student did it in class notebook. They could have done it also on paper and taken a picture of it and shared it. I have some students who have created their own PowerPoints as well and then it created these illustrations actually within within class notebook which is pretty incredible um one tip that i saw in reading some notes about accessibility is that screen readers have a hard time reading things that are inserted in text boxes so you do want to try to avoid that okay now i'm going to go to flipgrid and then we'll head over to OneNote. I think we're reserving 15 minutes at the end for questions. So I'll just be wrapping up in the next eight minutes or so. Okay, so the read aloud here is in, is uploaded in Flipgrid. Now, if your copyright says that it's 10%, then that's okay. You could focus on 10% of the story and do some reading responses there. So I've set closed captions for French. So after you upload the video, it'll, it'll take a few minutes, but then there'll be the closed captioning per frame it's not perfect you can't actually i'm not sure you can, can you go change it yeah you can go and change it 
I haven't used this feature before because I usually use live titles, but I wanted to show that to you and then you can update any changes that you make. There's also the option of immersive reader. So if you click on this book with microphone, then the students can use an immersive reader tool. Now for this, you can't make changes, but it can play back the, the text. I will show you the different features in a minute in OneNote. Tellement, Tellement la licorne parraine de Babi. Texte français, français Isabelle, Isabelle Montagnier. Montagnier. Tellement, Tellement se sent triste, triste sans morale, sans morale est, au est au plus bas. bas. Elle, voudrait Elle voudrait être une licorne. licorne. Okay, so those are a couple of accessibility options helping our FSL learners in Flipgrid. Okay, finally, OneNote which has similar features to, to Word. It's also a Microsoft tool. Okay, I accidentally closed my window here. I'm just going to navigate back to where I was. I, just for student privacy, I don't want you to see their names. So let me just set that back up. Okay, that should work hopefully. So OneNote is a Microsoft tool. It's labeled as Class Notebook. You can use an app like Office Lens for iPad or smartphone. Um, some people I think use Claro. And here, oh, on your screen you see I'm hiding my screen, but oops. Okay, let me get out of there. But you can see all of the names. Um, I have my screen moved over. I guess there's no way for me to hide that. Okay, so I have used Office Lens and I've inserted a picture. So Office Lens has converted it into a readable document. So this is from a text. So I have one page here. Uh, Office Lens, I mean, Immersive Reader doesn't like when there's columns. So if there's another column to the side, then you have to take the, the pictures and segments, which is what I did here. If you go to Immersive Reader, So go to view, then immersive reader. Here are the features of immersive reader. If you're familiar with immersive reader, I would love to see that in the chat. So you can go to reading preferences. Line focus is one line at a time or three lines at a time. Depending on the document, there might be the choice of five lines at a time. Also, you can, uh, add a picture dictionary feature and you can have a translation feature. So if the student's first language is English, then you can they can have the option of seeing a word or the whole document in English. There's Chinese, Persian. So there's so many options here based on Ukrainian, Arabic, based on what their first language is. So this can also help learners learning a second language. Then you have grammar options. I have the syllables turned on. You can turn them off. So we talk about what helps us as readers. You can have certain parts of speech highlighted. If that helps, nouns and verbs. 
can set your text preferences, three different types of fonts, depending on what's easier. This is usually the one chosen for primary, Comic Sans, because it looks mo closest to print. The text size. And this is what I um, was mentioning earlier, that you can choose your, your themes or your contrast colors. And this is based on research of how to support students with reading exceptionalities or low vision. Let me set it back to three lines. And there's a, there could be a few inaccuracies. Um, it's better when it's a document than when a picture, but I'll, I'll read, um, I'll play this for you to get an idea. Vive dans une région en hiver et une autre région en été. Les anichinables les suivent pour vivre près du gibier qu'ils chassent. À certains moments de l'année, les familles se réunissent pour former des groupes importants. Par exemple, beaucoup de familles travaillent ensemble pour récolter du sirop d'érable au printemps et du riz. OK, we've also uh, just started examining the collaboration space. So working on something together and in a group where they can all share their ideas. So we just started this. Oh, and then you know these students don't get it. Okay. So this is the example I wanted to share. So Le Anishinaabe spend one year making houses. Okay, so there's a, a comprehension issue there, but they've showed because it's not it's they live in their houses for about a year before they move. But this person has added some visuals. Other students have copied and pasted. Some have written in their own words. Some will add illustrations. Hopefully they're appropriate ones. <laughs> and you can go back and, and do a check-in with students. Okay, I will just quickly show immersive reader what it looks like in Word, and then I think we'll be wrapping up for our questions. I'm using the, um, the Word that's in Office 365 as opposed to the desktop version. And this is one of the stories that the student wrote, but here I corrected the mistakes. And then you can read, they can press the read aloud Join button. Me. Let me go back to the top. En premier, il y a un piranha. Le nom de ce piranha est Filet. Une fois, Filet a décidé de manger quelque chose. Je ne sais pas ce que j'ai mangé. Après, Phil a dit, c'est un petit garçon. Je... So the iPad has the least amount of uh, accessibility features. If you're working in live versus desktop versions, it also varies. So I will end with that slide. So we will open things up. Chantal, are you? Yeah, I'm just going to leave it on this slide so stu so that people can have a quick look at uh, what's available where, and we'll open it up to questions. Okay. Yes, Immersive Reader is built into Word. If you have an older version of Word, Chloe, then you might have to do an update. Um, it is in my my newer laptop. Uh, so, so uh, based on the newer updates, you will find it in both the desktop and the online Word versions. Mm -hmm. 
Now, does anybody have any tips for PDFs? I know that was a question earlier. And are we doing, are we going back in the chat, Jordan, or are people going to raise their hand? So people are welcome to turn on microphones or write in the chat. And what I'll do is stop the recording now so that if you want to turn on your camera, you can feel free to do that. Great. Thank you, everyone.